Hey guys, what's good? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to JDB Selects. Coming at you live and direct on Teams List Tuesday with another match breakdown. Kicking things off first with the Melbourne Storm taking on the Sydney Roosters on Thursday night at Amy Park in Melbourne. As always, when we do these match breakdowns, we like to start with a season snapshot, starting first with the Storm. Melbourne are currently 3-2 through 5 rounds, with wins over Parramatta, West Tigers and South Sydney. And their two losses so far this season have been to the Canary Bankstown Bulldogs and the Gold Coast Titans. Including this game on Thursday with the Roosters, the Storm have three more games before their first bye of the season. And in that time, they will face the Sea Eagles as well as the Warriors in their commemorative Anzac Day clash. Following their first bye, they would then just have a three-game run into their second, with the rematch against the Rabbits as well as games against both the Brisbane Broncos and the Redcliffe Dolphins. And moving to the Roosters, they seem to have bounced back well following their round one defeat to the Dolphins, going on to win their next three games against the Warriors, Bunnies and Eels. The Roosters will then have to play seven more games, including this one against Melbourne, before their second bye of the season. And in that time, they will have a rematch with the Warriors, as well as two games with the Dragons, and a showdown with the defending Premier Penrith Panthers. The last time these two sides met was back in round 24 of last year. The Roosters got the better of the Storm that night, winning 18 points to 14 in a gritty, epic, low-scoring contest. Melbourne's handling and completion rates really let them down. Melbourne's forward pack was also unable to get firing with only one Storm forward making more than 100 metres that night. That was Kenny Bromwich with 101. Jared Wairia Hardgreaves was put on report twice in that game as well as spending 10 minutes in the bin following a flare-up with Nelson Asafa Solomona. Joey Manu was in sublime form for the Roosters that night, running for 165 metres and breaking 9 tackles. Now, moving to the team's list for this one, starting first with the Melbourne Storm. One big change, and that is the number 7, Jerome Hughes, is back in action this week following his suspension. That sees Jonah Peets moved out of the starting squad. The only other change for Craig Bellamy in the Storm this week is Tarek Sims returns to the interchange, which pushes Grant Anderson to the 18th man. And moving to the Roosters team list, obviously the big exclusion for the Roosters this week is their captain, James Tedesco, who has suffered a concussion and will be forced to serve the mandatory 11-day stand-down period as a result of a high shot from Bailey Simonson in last week's game against the Eels. However, I don't believe Roosters fans will be too worried as Joey Manu returns from his suspension this week and slots straight in at fullback. This is also the first time that hooker Brandon Smith will take on his former club. There's been lots of chat already in the media, so I'm expecting a big game out of him. Looking at the two sides head-to-head, -head, the Storm are currently 6th on the ladder, while the Roosters are in 3rd place. Melbourne have won 6 of the past 10 games against the Roosters. The last 10 games have been close between these two sides, with the average winning margin being just 12 points, and the average total points being just 34. Could easily be looking at unders again this week. Now, as always, when we do these match breakdowns, we do finish with a key player matchup. I did want to go for the hookers this week in Grant and Smith. Obviously, Smith coming up against his former club and Grant, who's just been outstanding for the Storm. But I did the hookers last week in the Storm and Souths game. So I've gone for the fullbacks this week, the stand-in fullbacks in Nick Meany and Joey Manu. Meany has been standing in for Pappenhausen for quite some time now since he suffered that knee fracture last year, and he's done an outstanding job. So far this season, he's pretty much scored a try per game with four so far this year. He's averaging 149 metres, has one try assist, three line breaks and 11 tackle breaks. I think Meany's support play has improved dramatically in the time he's spent covering Pappenhausen, but I think his strongest suit so far this season has been his defence. He's only missed four tackles all season and pulled off some miraculous try savers. And on the other side of the coin, you have Joey Manu, who is easily one of the competition's premier fullbacks, except he plays at centre. Manu was obviously outstanding for the Kiwis last year. He ended up winning the 2002 International Rugby League Golden Boot as the Player of the Year. His effort at the World Cup was phenomenal. He ran for 1,301 metres in just five games and set a record with 401 metres in a single game for the Kiwis in the mid-season test against Tonga. As mentioned earlier, I'm quietly confident that most Roosters fans may actually be excited about the fact that Manu gets a crack at fullback. His international form has been outstanding. He's a complete meter eater and gives 110% no matter what position. This will be a cracking contest between the two standing fullbacks. Obviously, I have a wee bit of a soft spot for Joey Manu being a Kiwi and all, so I can't wait to see him at fullback this week. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you later.